Hello, Spraylock Nation. Coming to you again from Chattanooga, Tennessee. We got a wonderful backdrop behind us. We got some concrete being placed. And what the big thing about concrete is, you got to have that binder. You got to have that wonderful cement. And we just did a video on history of cement, but today we're going to talk about manufacturing cement. I got to test at a cement manufacturing plant many years ago. Got to see a preheater tower go up, some silos go up. It was a wonderful slip form process. Really cold nights in December doing at nighttime placements. But the one thing I didn't get to do is a tour of the, of the facility. So while I know what a preheater looks like, I know how tall it was, all the inner workings of it, I really didn't get a chance. I've gotten a little information, but I'd like to get a little bit more from you. So if you wouldn't mind, discuss manufacturing cement, where it starts from. I mean, we've got quarries, we know it comes from limestone, so we can't take that uh, cement for granted, can we? You're absolutely right. Yeah, so cement is made primarily of limestone or at least calcium. The four main elements to make cement are calcium, silica, aluminum, and iron. Uh, there's many other elements that go into it, but those are the four main ones. Limestone can constitute up to 90% of the raw materials used to make cement. Uh, therefore, cement plants are usually located on or near a limestone quarry. Uh, so the way they harvest limestone is through demolition. And once they uh, blow the rocks up, they haul them over to a primary crusher. These rocks can be several feet wide when they go into the primary crusher. They come out about softball sized chunks. Uh, then they're uh, then sent to a secondary crusher where they come out golf ball size. So you bring big rocks and you make them in real little rocks with these two crushers. Now I know it's got to be a fairly quick process, but we're not talking about hours, we're talking like minutes, right? Even seconds, yeah. These things just chew that limestone up like they're nothing. It's pretty incredible. So once you get past the crushers, I know we're not there yet, we're golf ball size. We know cement's not golf ball sized. Mm -hmm. So what do we go from there? So the limestone high in calcium carbonate and the limestone low in calcium carbonate are mixed together. Uh, the limestone is actually going to contain some of the other elements that I mentioned earlier. Um, the limestone harvested near the surface of the quarry is going to contain more of the silica, aluminum, iron uh, elements. The limestone further down is going to be more calcium carbonate. So depending on what's already in the limestone, uh, other raw materials are added to give the silica aluminum iron uh, needed to make cement. So this is closely controlled. Um, those materials are combined together depending on what type of cement you're making. They then go into a vertical roller mill or a ball mill. These raw materials are then ground together to a fine powder and this is called the raw mill. From there, the raw mill then goes into a preheater tower uh, to where 95% of the carbon dioxide is cooked off, the moisture is cooked off uh, before it goes, enters the kiln. Now the kiln is really where the magic happens. Uh, minerals are developed that are very reactive. Uh, the, more, the further the uh, material moves down the kiln, different minerals and different chemical compositions are taking place. Uh, what you're left with by the, at the very end is a little golf ball sized pieces called clinker. Clinkers then cooled almost immediately with uh, either by using fans or mist um, and then goes into uh, clinker storage. The last stage of cement production is the finish mill. Now this can be a vertical roller mill or a ball mill. These ball mills have different sized balls, steel balls that just roll around in the cylinder that are beating this material completely together. So the clinker is ground with gypsum which helps control set time and once that's down to a specified um, size, the cement is uh, ready to go, ready to be shipped. That's interesting, and I appreciate it. So we're talking about, you know, when we get to the, out of the kiln, we get to the clinker, we're trying to cool it down. Mm -hmm. I got a question. We just went through a preheater and we went through a kiln. Mm -hmm. How high are we actually taking these temperatures to break this down and to make that magic happen? Right. To, to get those components that we, we all know and love out of cement. Yeah, that's a great point. So the kiln, the clinkering temperature is actually happening up to around 27, 2800 degrees. Uh, and those high temperatures are really required for this uh, process to take place and for those minerals to form that are uh, really the key ingredients for cement to be reactive, such as alite, belite, uh, aluminate, and ferrite. Awesome. So basically, as a recap, we take big rocks, crush into little bitty rocks. We mix it with some other stuff. We heat it up. We throw it into, into another kiln. We get it even hotter. It goes through a metamorphosis, for lack of a better term. 
we create other rocks again. We get back to golf ball size. Right. And then when it comes out, you cool it back down, add some gypsum to it, mill, mill it back up again, get the powder that we all know and love. It's not a cement slab, people. We all know this. It's a concrete slab, but cement's in there. So, one other question for you. How about another video, Brett? You're doing so good this time around. What about one talking about cement hydration? Would you be up for that? I'd love to. All right. People stay tuned. We're going to do another video on cement, cement hydration. Look forward to it. Thank you. Subscribe and enjoy. Thank you.